Well, hello there, and welcome back to um, Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. Bum, bum. This is episode 45. Um, I actually started this episode earlier and I'm re-recording because I um, didn't realize we were leaving so quickly for the David Bowie movie. We were um, leaving half an hour earlier than I thought. <laughs> Oops. Um, so the last one ended up being chaotic in a very quick um, quick span of time. <laughs> so welcome and uh, like and subscribe. Do all the things you're supposed to do. Share to your friends. Um, this episode is going to be a little different in that I'm going to be introducing the um, method to how I'm going to take the next steps with a very different approach. Finally, bum, 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 bum. are you ready? I'm going to be doing Sculpt Crete. Ta -da. Yeah, very cool, right? Sculpt Crete. So, what does it say on the front? Works like clay, hardens like concrete. Sculpt Crete. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so this is the five pound bag. Uh, I could not find it anywhere locally, so I did get it on Amazon. Yeah, I think I got it on Amazon. Um, oh, we, we hung some artwork. Sweet. All right, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> some artwork I haven't seen out for quite a while because we don't have as many walls in this house as we did in our last house. Um, so, very exciting. This is going to be happening here. As you can see, I did a little bit of prep work before getting on with you guys. This is just one kitchen plastic trash bag. I cut, or, cut it all the way around, put it bottom to bottom, and um, laid it out, taped it to the table. Protect the surface, right? So we're going with that. And then um, the next thing is, oh, and just to recap from the last episode, ba da ba ba, he's all done. Finish it, finish it, finish it. Uh, with drainage holes and everything. So ready to go outside, completely hollowed out, which is pretty awesome. So he is going to go outside, <clears throat> get planted, although all the work outside in the back. Uh, so our whole backyard is torn up. Uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. Um, we're having walls and terraces and everything redone. Like literally like there's bulldozer and the whole deal out there, right? And so they've been working on that and they've got the walls in around here and they've got a, a place over here for a hot tub that we're going to be getting probably next season. And uh, it's a much bigger terracey thing out on that side. So they've got to also pull up our back stoop, which is all marble. It's all Carrera marble. I mean, it's Carrera marble. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, but it's these long um Slabs, they're not really slabs. Like I think slab, like big piece, right? These are long bricks, long whatever's flat pieces that are like this long, this long, this long, this long. And they're about that thick in places, that thick in places. And what they did was they did an underlayment and put it on them and then uh, have it surrounded with little gardeny things. Well, that's all being torn out. All of this stuff underneath is going to be redone with new... Um, what do they call it? Rock powder or rock or like rock chips. So chipped rock, whatever it is. So they're going to put that as an underlayment because um, the chipmunks have gotten under there and been burrowing and uh, undermining it. So it does this and it's not not safe to walk out there if, unless you have got shoes on. That's for sure because you'll, you'll break a toe. You won't just stub it. Um, so that'll be great. They're going to redo that um, on the upper part. But that means that where I have my potted plants, which are doing very well, by the way, I should bring them down and show you. Um, I am going to be losing that patio. Therefore, I'm going to be losing the space. We're going to have to figure out where we're going to put all of our furniture. The, the Half of the, the garage is now filled with new appliances for when they actually start the kitchen remodel. Um <clears throat> So we've got so much stuff going on, it's kind of like, oh crap, where, do, where does stuff go in the interim in a, in, you know, in a, it's a big house, but it's, you know, it's a ranch. On the, and so it's all livable space. Um, the basement area here, we could store, you know, a bunch of stuff for the winter, but um, 
Anyway, so those are thoughts that I've got to have. So he is going to be going somewhere. I may not plant him. I may just put him over on my workbench, uh, which if you've seen a previous episode where I was actually painting on a workbench, um, that may be sort of his home until next season. So anyway, so today with the Sculpt Creed, let's get back to this. I've got a bunch of things that I wanted to show you for a setup, and that's going to be the whole episode today. The next episode will be after, right after that, and um, <clears throat> I'll pick it back up in just a few minutes when I go and get some other supplies. Um, I have my pottery throwing um, Patriots sweatshirt on. Um, it's not blasphemy. It's an old sweatshirt. It's okay. Uh, so we're going to start with what heads am I doing this on? So I've got the foam heads that I got. Bum, bum, bum. She's pretty spectacular, right? Awesome. Not sure exactly what the design, what the facial sculpting is going to actually be in the end, but the first episode is going to be getting a base coat of Sculptcrete on all of these mannequin heads. But before that, what do I need to do? This to that one. And yes, I've got them stashed everywhere, right? So I just have three. <laughs> I only have three. Um, even though when everything was coming in the mail um, and when I was picking them up from different sources, the guys were like, um, how many are you going to get of these? And I'm like, well, I only have like eight. Um, because they just, I kept finding cool ones. So anyway, so the top's going to be cut off of this. That's going to happen in this episode. Actually, let's do that in this episode. I've got everything here for that. Uh, we can dig out the, the head. This one needs to be dug out even more. It's got a drain hole. As you can see, it goes all the way through. And um, <clears throat> these have holes in them. But this one, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do a drain hole that goes all the way through. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, and this one, I don't think I'm going to either. That goes all the way up and through because this hole actually comes out like, whoopsies, this hole comes out like here. So this one, I'm going to do drain hole here and here. This one, I'm going to do probably, yeah, the drain hole here in the front under the chin and then in the back. And they'll be easy to do. So what am I going to do to apply the sculpt crete? Well, let me show you. This is exciting. So there are some tools that I found that I went searching for because I know I had them and they were in Lee's stuff because he actually uses them with some of his work. So um, I told him you know, years ago, go ahead, use them. I don't use them on my on um, canvases anymore. So I used to use palette knives on uh, palette knives on my um, canvas work. So for painting and acrylics, you can use, and uh, oil, you can use palette knives. Now what's a palette knife? Ta -da! This is one type of palette knife. So the oldest ones I have, however, are these plastic ones that I got in a kit when I was young, like in my teens in high school. And I got this kit of palette knives. And it was like beginner's kit of palette knives, whatever. And what I like about them is they're fixable. So, and over the years, I picked up a couple more. Um, I'm missing a few of them that I that I had. I'm sure they're around somewhere in some box. Um, so I've got a funky, cool shaped one. This may, I think, is one that Lee picked up. I don't think this is one that I bought. It may be one that I bought. It's got a wood handle. This is one of the plastic handle, which I really like. I love this palette knife. I used to have three or four of these all different sizes. Not sure where they are. But so literally these plastic ones, I know for sure, are my original set. And they have got, they've even got typical colors of mine that I would use on them. They have then got to be, so I would have gotten them when I was fifth, like 15-ish. So they're 30, <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> I'm 52. So they're like 17 years, uh, to 37 years old. Holding up pretty well for a 37 year old, I'd say. Um, crazy when I realized that when I was getting them out, I'm like, oh my God, these are from high school. I can't, I, and what's amazing is that they've traveled with me since high school. I actually, I, what happened was, you know, I, I lived in Europe for a little while uh, in high school, went to Salzburg and studied there and blah, 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 blah. I came back, then went and moved and went to the Midwest, blah, blah, blah. With all of those moves, you know, it's like only certain things came with me. But 
mom and dad luckily kept all the crap that I left behind at their house. God bless them. Um, and it was in boxes in the attic and um, in different areas and stuff like that. And mom, being an artist, being a really, really, really good artist, uh, saw these things and said, oh, I know what these are. These are Patrick's palette knives. And at one point, going through stuff, um, I saw them and I was like, holy crap, those are the ones I had in high school. And I got them back. <laughs> So I've got those. And then I've got something else that's cool. <clears throat> so I've got, you know, a, a bunch of things that I can use. I'm going to actually use these. So in pottery, which I just started, I'm an absolute beginner and I love it. Um, in pottery, you use a lot of texture tools. <laughs> really cool, too. Uh, I'm finding out about them and it's like, oh, that, that really gets me going. So the texture tools are kind of like a saw blade. And I saw the saw blade and I went, oh. Ooh, if I'm working on something like this and I'm doing sculpting, how cool would that be for texture, right? The blades. So the teeth on the blades are really good. It's got a nice pointy tip to them. So I'm gonna use, be using these. These are those skill saw blades that I, I'm also gonna be using them today for cutting out the, the guts or the, the brains basically of the head. And then there's a couple tools. So this is just a painter's palette, but it's one, or not palette, pff, painter's, Oh gosh, putty knife? Sure, let's go with that. Um, so this is scraper, is what it is, plastic scraper. It's not terribly rigid, you can see. So that's actually really good because it's a firm surface, but it's a wider, wider edge. I'm not gonna need any wider than this because everything is round, everything is a round surface. And then I found this in Lee's stuff. So I'm gonna borrow this, maybe permanently, don't tell him. He doesn't watch these, so. He'll never know. Um, I may hide it on my workbench because <laughs> my table, work table is right next to his. So he'll come down and be like, hey, that's mine. So this is really cool. This has got like potential for cool texture, right? It's it's not like super soft. So, and it's, I think it's meant to be used for texturing, maybe for inks, because he uses inks. Uh, but definitely like paint texture roller, not for coverage type of thing. So love that in the surface. I'm going to make, make sure that this gets really rinsed out well, though. I don't want to get it gummed up. And with cement, it's not clay. So this stuff is cement. That means it's a chemical reaction that cures it. Therefore, I'm going to be wearing gloves as well. Uh, the chemical reaction creates heat, blah, 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 and it cures it permanently. It's not going to be dissolved by water. Whereas if you worked in clay, it dissolved by water. So you could always clean it out later if you left it dirty, right? Well, <clears throat> not this stuff. So I want to make sure that anything I'm using, I get all of the cement off of it before I go and do anything else, right? So I got a couple other things that are going to be helpful. I've got some meh water. I don't really care if it's like super clean water, but this is my water bucket since we don't have water down here yet. We don't have a spigot or a um, sink. I don't have a utility sink down here yet. Uh, I got all the fixings for it and it'll be easy to put one in, but I just haven't got around to it. And I don't think I'm gonna do it. I don't like plumbing. Plumbing makes me nervous. Like I'll do electrical any day, which is kind of stupid because I can burn down the house really easily if I don't do it right. But I feel confident that I do it right because when you put things together and you, you know, it's like you can see it's done right. With plumbing though, whew, I used to do it and there were a couple times where it wasn't such a great result and I thought I did a damn good job. And that little drip undermines everything. Like you do it upstairs and it's coming down through. It's going wherever it wants to go. It's going to find a place to go through and then rot, then just dry, then potentially burn down the house if it hits wires. So I don't do plumbing. Let's just put it that way. Um, unless it's like replacing a faucet and a sink or fixtures, I'll do. But actual plumbing, uh-uh. There are people who do that extremely well, and I will pay them to do it any day because uh, I appreciate their skill and the um, confidence that I then have that I don't lose sleep over whether or not my crappy uh, plumbing skills are gonna hold. <laughs> I don't need that. Too old for that. So got a bucket, got water in it. You can see that it's kind of meh water. I don't care. It's gonna be in sculpt grade. 
This is my water bucket for everything. Like I'll go with my, uh, this is the reason that it's kind of murky inside is because I pour out my paint water and then let it settle. And then I, you know, for, for um, cleaning brushes and then I get more water. Um, in a, what I do is I take another cup, everything settles and then I dump the old stuff and then I take it clean water off the top. So I'll just use this uh, for water for the sculpt creep because I guess you put in just enough water to make it so that it is like a clay. It's got fiber and everything in it, but it's, it'll be like a clay substance. Looking forward to that. So then the other two things I have as the, as the last things for prep work is I was looking around to see if I could, oh God, if I could find, there's a lot of um, sawdust in that one. Uh, this was over on my workbench and I had done been sanding and painting and everything for all the cabinet doors. And that's where I did it because I, I hung plastic and made sort of a clean, a dirty room. I guess it was a dirty room, really, uh, in order so that all of the dust from sanding down every single door for um, our kitchen cabinets before we decided to completely tear them out. But when we did a little update on it, we um, I did them here in the basement, which was really nice, actually, because I could go anytime, come down, sand, prime. Then I have, a, I have a sprayer. I have a couple sprayers, a paint sprayers. Of course, why wouldn't I? Because I'm me. Uh, and, you know, just spray at my leisure. So I got them, got them cranked out pretty well. So I've got a smaller box. This is from Nails, Hot Tip Galvanized Nails, which I assume these are ones I bought for building shed, uh, which I'm going to be building another shed at this house because I just finished the one at the last house and then moved because that's how it works. I think I had it, the other shed for maybe one or two seasons. But then I've got a bigger bucket, which I think this is gonna to be too big for what I wanna do, for starters especially. I think I wanna do smaller batches and use the smaller bucket, because it sets up within an hour, but I'm wondering how it works at like half an hour of working with it. Um, I don't want it to set up too much while I, and feel really pressured to get it done. So I have all of those things. And then the other thing I have is my printouts. Let's see if I can find them. I don't know where they are. I may have recycled them, oh crap. Well, I can reprint them because they're on my phone. I can just send them to the printer. And um, they are printouts of shapes, uh, shapes of faces and types of faces that I like, that I found online, that I screenshot. And um, so I'm gonna have sort of a source book. And what I'm going to do is well, after I get all of this down to where I want it uh, and um, usable, oh God, this is going to make a freaking mess again. Oh my God, what a mess. Um, so after I do that, I am going to um, have them for reference points and decide how I'm going to do it. Because, you know, there's so many options. I could do alien looks, which I think is actually kind of cool. There are some better mid-century modern inspired, which are really funky and I like a lot. Um, there's sort of, you know, like a minimalist, and then there's ones that are um, lots of different styles and approaches that, to me, seem really, they, they're very inspiring and would be fun to sculpt. So now what am I doing? I am scraping the inside of the head to make enough room so that I can have, oh, this is a messy stage. Cause look, <laughs> static cling is amazing. Um, yeah, that only makes it worse. So anywho, this is all gonna go in the trash can and it's gonna go all over the floor, which means it's gonna be vacuumed up. Um, oddly enough, I've mentioned this before, but our basement has central vac. Yes. You heard me right. Our basement has central back. So obviously they were planning on actually developing this into potentially, or at least leaving the option for developing it into, you know, finished basement, which is what we're doing now. But incredibly enough, when they put the, the whenever they installed it all throughout the house upstairs, the central back, they also put in all of the tubing for it down here and the receptacles. There's like seven or eight receptacles down here for potential places where there would be rooms. Um, so then all you do is you just run it down into the wall next to an outlet and bada bing bada boom, you have central back. So um, oddly enough, I, I've been the only one who uses the central back. <laughs> um, Larry brought with him this wonderful brand new like super back. 
It's a mealy, 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 M-I-E-L-E, -E, however you pronounce it. Uh, I'm not really going to go into it any more than that. But anyway, so our cleaning ladies, yes, we have cleaning ladies because we have three men who will live here. And we have the capacity to clean, but decided that um, we really just don't want to. So she and her mom come in um, and take care of us once a month, but they use the um, Yelly Super Vac. And um, I'm the one who uses the house vac whenever I'm downstairs working on projects. So it's pretty cool actually to have it. Um, I've never had, you know, central vac before. And um, I've never even like seen it in, I've seen it in like houses, like other people's houses. And mom and dad, incredibly enough, their um, RV has central vac. How cool is that, right? So literally mom to vacuum in the RV, because you know, RVs get messy because they're at campgrounds and stuff like that. Instead of having to pull out it, you know, whatever. Um, she just hooks up the central back and turns itself on and um, then she can empty it whenever she wants. I think it's freaking awesome. First time she showed me that, I was like, all right, that, this is incredible. It's like 40, 45 feet, something like that. It's really beautiful, beautiful. It's one of those when, where you actually drive it. Like the one we have, it, it's not an RV, it's a um, pull behind camper. Uh, tw we have a 22 foot pull behind camper. But the one mom and dad have is twice, literally twice as long as that. And uh, big old engine in it and the whole deal. Um, we get like seven miles per gallon or something insanely bad like that. Of course, when I'm towing with my truck, I have a Ram 1500 um, that I got specifically because the camper kept on getting bigger. Um, it does a beautiful job. I love my truck. But, um, and the Ram truck has been just ideal because we've got the crew cab on it, so it's big enough to be... <laughs> this is such a horrible sound. I don't even know if you can hear me over it, but... <laughs> It's so satisfying. Um, anyway, so we got it so that I wanted both the guys to be able to sit in the back and not feel like they had to um, not have feet or heads. So it's big enough for the, it's like an SUV inside with a, with a payload. And I use it as a truck all the time. So it's not like I got the truck and it's like, oh, well you got a truck, it's a giant truck and you don't use it as a truck. It's like, well, no, actually I use it. I use the bed of that truck all the time. Um, so I love it. It's great. It's, it's so nice having one where you can do that and not worry about it when you work on projects as much as I do. Like all the drywall thread here, pop it in the back of the truck. But it's a beautiful truck. Uh, it drives so smoothly too. Oh my God, you never know you were in a truck. Um, like the trucks we had growing up. You kind of knew you were riding in a car, truck, even the S10 that we had. S10s, I think we had a couple of them. So that is more cleared out and I'll show you the inside. I think that it's got plenty of room for dirt and everything that we're gonna need, much more space. It's not just the fist worth, it's actually fist significantly more than the fist. And um, even my chubby hands, I don't have chubby hands, I just have stubby hands. It's like the palm of my hand is like crazy long. So compared to how short my fingers are. My, the palm of my hand is literally the same length as the, my fingers. Like literally, it's weird. But anyway, uh, makes for wearing gloves a real, finding the size of gloves a real pain in the butt because the fingers are always too long. But the, if I get an actual large, which is the length of my fingers, then the palm only comes down to here. So it, it come on, weird hands. But anyway, um, they are what they are. You adapt, you deal with it. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't continue to complain about it. So there's that. All right. So we're going to cut off the top of another head over here. I have a spray bottle. I was thinking the spray bottle might actually help for the static. And I know it totally would. But I don't, I don't actually know what I did with the spray bottle. That's really weird. I thought I brought it down. Apparently I didn't. Just water in it. Um, there we go. So let's go to the next head. And I'm going to cut this one out, and then we will pick up with the next episode with the next head. I wonder if this would work. No, probably not. I don't want to ruin my palette knife. 
So what am I going to use? I have the blades. I'm going to use the shorter one that I was just using. Let's draw a line around both of these and see what we're going to do. I think we're going to... One of them I want to make really weird where there's no eyes. I just want planes going up. And I was thinking about doing this really funky thing. So I was thinking about doing this where it's just the nostrils of a nose and then a mouth yelling teeth and teeth. Kind of cool. Could I actually make it hollow so that there's just dirt inside? <laughs> That's cool. And then maybe on the other side is an actual face, right? Oh, the options are endless. Uh, but anyway, so what do I need to do to cut off the top? Let's just do it evenly and keep my pen where it is and turn the head. It actually makes it easier to try to keep it. So elbow on the table, hand in one place. Try to just keep your hand where it's at. And turn, 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 good song. Um, so do I like that? It kind of comes down far on the front. Do I really need that much space up above? I don't. So let's try this instead. You're not gonna see any of this, so it doesn't hurt to do a few drawings of where I'm gonna cut it. I kind of like that better. It's a little higher up. I've got more space to work on the face and on the head. I'm gonna do the top line there. So what about this one? What shall I do for cutting your head? So I did on previous ones where I cut it to the back so that the face was way up here. If I go down far enough like this one, I could actually go down significant distance for, um, for soil. You gotta make sure there's enough room for the soil, make them functional. If I did the angle, I'd probably only come to here. There's a nice little, which that's probably where they pushed it out of the, the form. Yeah, it is. So those are not extruder, what are they called? Um, oh God, dad would be proud of me if I can remember this. Because uh, we used to, he had a um, plastics molding company and that's where the ejector pins. So that's probably where they, it ejected them out of pop out of the mold because you can see that there's two halves. So, um, so, so if we go that low in the back and I bring it way up here, I'm gonna do it at an angle. So the other one that I did, you'll remember the little, uh, the pla hard plastic mold that I did. And I come up here, this is kind of cool. It's kind of cool that it crescents up around the head. But what I didn't like about it is that it swoops down and then goes across. Well, that whole front crescent of the head is then, uh, you can't put any soil in it because, uh, there we go. It, um, obviously the soil can't come, can't go up this high to like where it would normally be. So you can't pack soil up to this line. The soil bottom line is gonna be here. So you gotta leave enough room from here down to actually have soil in. Even if you pack it toward the front, it's still eventually gonna wash out the back. So that's actually probably too high. But what I can do, ooh, here's an idea. Go part of the way, right? Go across the top of that nubbin. And then I can bring this down sooner and just straight across. Oops, I don't wanna go lower than the back line. Back line is here. But what I can do is make it so it comes down and across, and this becomes my soil line. So as I do this, I'm learning a little bit more each time. Come, oh, and I can use these lines as my guidelines for where I'm coming down to. Oops, that was a crappy line. And then over. So that'll be even on both sides. So that's kind of cool. So this gets marked out, this is marked out, this is marked out, and this is marked out. So now I know what I'm cutting and what I'm actually taking out. It goes down to here. But I stay above this line, right? And then this is not a line anymore. Make sure it's clear when I come back to do it. So, all right, I'm at 30 minutes, my friends. So I'm going to, in the next episode, I'm going to dig out these two heads and hopefully actually start sculpt creating, finally. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. And whenever you get a chance to watch the next video, 
we'll be working on these guys from here on out for a little while until I get all three heads done. And um, I hope you treat yourself well, give yourself lots of space, you deserve it. And uh, we're always hardest on ourselves and we're hard on other people, especially since COVID, we're really hard on other people. Relax, chill out. I know people hate hearing that, but it's kind of a good mantra to have. It's like, ooh, remember, somebody says something, ah! is, our, is our kind of the response we want. So instead it can be, blah, instead of blah, instantly. The other thing is I always have this great image and I'm gonna start reminding people um, that I've used my whole life. And uh, it made it so that I went a little far with it for a while, but as a performer, it actually really, um, it helped me a lot as a performer to stay in character. And even when people are literally on fire, I will tell you about that uh, on stage during an opera. <laughs> yes. That was part of my career. Uh, somebody caught on stage, uh, on fire on stage. And um, so even during all of that, I was able to keep my cool. Now, why? Because I am a duck and the world beads up on my back and rolls off. And I can choose to have whatever sticks, sticks, but I can also choose to just let everything roll off. So people's comments, everything, they're all theirs. People's issues are their issues. We tend to make other people's issues our issues for some reason. We just take that on. Um, so choose, make choices. Choose not to take other people's issues on, not to over-dramatize, not to create issues where there are none. Um, it's not worth your time or energy. There's so many great things that you can put your time and energy into. Those things are not worth it, all right? So live your life beautifully, put love out in the world. Thank you, Sir Elton John. There's not enough love in the world. And I agree with him heart, wholeheartedly. All right, have a great day. See you soon. Bye.